Right, good morning, everyone. Uh, my talk this morning is entitled Chemical Biology and Radionics and Healing, but it could just as easily, um, I could just as easily flip terms around and talk about um, uh, radionics, chemical biology, and healing. So this is going to be an overview talk, and he, these are some of the points I hope to catch today. Um, so my, first of all, my definitions of the terms in the title are going to be something like the following. Chemical biology is a, um, a focus on um, the s smaller aspects of biochemistry. Um, radionics, for those unfamiliar with it, is, is, was a, sort of a transmission-based um, uh, method to both to, to treat diseases and also is based on, incorporates the idea of reading so that you do a reading and then you can broadcast um, in the vibrational, in the, with the idea of vibration being going both ways. Um, and the, someone mentioned earlier, I think Bill did about uh, hair, um, hair and reading in envelopes, those types of ideas were in radionics um, since Abrams' time in the 20s. Uh, finally, um, healing will be the reversal of the disease state and the return to normal physiology and structure, much like uh, the examples Bill cited earlier. Um, and so uh, in the course of my reading, I'll mention uh, uh, Dr. Hale there, whom I'll describe momentarily, um, cited the work of Felix Bloch and Purcell in 1953 with their, for their nuclear magnetic resonance work as a possible mechanism. Uh, so the ideas I'd like to cover right now in the researchers are, first of all, the person I've been researching for a lot, long time, um, physiologist uh, William F. Koch, and he used uh, very small molecules, car carbonyl compounds <clears throat> with molecular weights of maybe 80 to 200 are good examples. Um, and he treated all kinds of diseases, but in particular, he was most noted for cancer, but um, diabetes, uh, tuberculosis uh, in humans, in addition to uh, mastitis in dairy cattle, and there was a little bit of mouse research, but for the most part, he didn't need it. He had accomplished that earlier. Uh, Bill Bingston's work, I want to um, compare to uh, this as I have in the past. Um, I'm gonna suggest just for conceptually think of it as a transmission, whether or not it's correct, that's Bill's issue. Um, and similarly, like Coke, Bill treated cancer, um, and I'll explain the chiral and achiral aspects later. Um, uh, George Lakovsky was a French, Ru Franco-Russian researcher who was known for his multi-wave oscillator, and he too treated cancer, and I'll show some pictures of him, his work, and, uh, and then um, Hale, whom I mentioned earlier, was doing some radionic research in his life, at the end of his life, and some of the examples of diseases that were treated by uh, Abrams early on, the founder of radionics, were tuberculosis um, and cancer, but I'm drawing a distinction here because although most people think of radionics as involving healing, uh, there's also the anti-healing uh, aspect that um, Hale uh, talked about, uh, discussed in his research. And then finally, I want to bring in something that might seem um, unrelated, but that's the work of Tom Dykstra, whom everyone here probably knows, and his ideas of olfaction, EM olfaction in, in insects. And so these are cures, and then I'm going to argue, I'm going to suggest that these are, this, the olfaction idea is a similar um, manifestation of, of of the healing process, so rather than call it healing, I'm calling it a bioeffect. In these four, we have healing, and in this, we have a different reaction being initiated. That's what I'm suggesting, and I'm going to go into the what that would imply from from the chemistry of it. So, first of all, um, I want to talk about how I about the genesis of this talk, and that has to do when I was going through some of William J. Hale's papers, and this is a bit of Hale's biography. Uh, he did his PhD at Harvard, uh, did a little year in, year in Europe, uh, w was professor of chemistry at University of Michigan for 15 years, was invited to uh, Midland, Michigan by Herbert Dow, the founder of Dow Chemical, to uh, talk about, to discuss organic, organic chemistry. Herbert Dow realized they needed to get with organic chemistry, um, get, to have no, some organic chemistry research. So. Uh, Hale left the University of Michigan and founded um, Dow Chemicals uh, 
uh, department of the Organic Chemistry Research Division of Dow Chemical. And then earlier on in his life, he was um, uh, on the National Research Council. And then in the 30s, after he left Dow, he, he was the founder of Chemergy, which is uh, the, the, the root words for Chemergy are chemistry, obviously, and then Ergy is work. So he was uh, kind of a pioneer. And so people know about Henry Ford's idea of soybeans. That's the work of William J. Hale. Uh, so in going through his papers, I found this really interesting um, letter. So what Hale was doing is he was drawing a pers prospectus for the Homeotronic Foundation, which was doing radionic research. And he was querying the three principles um, for some bio biographical information. And this, this quote appeared um, in Curtis Upton's reply to William Hale for the biographical information. Then came the buff coach in Bantam egg that, so that's a chicken, um, the buff coach in Bantam egg that hatched out with a pheasant feather on the chick uh, since the eggs were being charged with the stresses of a, of a feather from a pheasant. So what he would have done is put a pheasant feather in the, in the machine, you broadcast it, and the chick hatched out with a pheasant feather. I don't have, it's, it was sort of like that was, he, he mentioned this because it, in, to explain his interest, his ongoing interest in radionics and his fascination with it. So Hale wanted to, so what they had been doing with the, the Ukako process, Upton knew the Armstrong Company, and they were the principals in the Homeotronic Foundation. Uh, they were principally doing um, insect research, I mean, uh, trying to do pest control for uh, agricultural work. Um, so when you think about this claim, it seems pretty amazing that how is it that you're changing the makeup of a chicken to look like a pheasant? So, I'm going to inter suggest that we entertain the idea that this is correct, that this really happened. So let's think about what would it take for to accomplish to affect that change. So these are some of so these are the questions I'm I'm asking of what would be required. So I'm just I would encourage you to think about that and what would be required to to make to affect these changes in the egg. And so uh, I ran across the idea of. Um, uh, chiral catalysis, and then I did a little reading and found this lecture by uh, Ryoji Noyori. And in summary, he says nature is chiral. So going to his Nobel Prize lecture, um, chirality again is, for those unfamiliar with it, you know, your left hand and your right hand are presumably pretty close to identical, but the difference is they're opposite. Uh, so he talks about um, physiological processes are very dependent upon the correct enantiomers. Um, and I'm seeing he, I want here, this is, I think, key. Chiral receptors uh, require absolute configuration to, for control. And it, seemingly, it was fairly recent that, that drug companies, for example, have been incorporating this because he said there were um, some disasters when racemic mixtures, that means an equal mixture of both, were uh, used in drugs, and a different enantiomer has a different effect. So the, so the idea, what I want you to come away from here, is the idea of transmission in radionics from the chicken egg. So, you're, so somehow, one way or another, uh, um, the information from the pheasant feather is being broadcast, transmitted to the egg, and the egg, the chick, whatever, is receiving it. Um, Hale also claimed that scent can be broadcast. So I mentioned um, they were doing insect control. So in a letter to one of his former uh, Dow Chemical colleagues, and uh, Mr. Greeby wasn't uh, very receptive to, to these ideas, so he was challenging him uh, that they could send, o they could transmit odors at, I think he said, 10 or 20 miles, and you could smell it if you were near the tree. Uh, okay. Um, so, okay, I've got that slide. Um, okay, now, uh, since I started with Hale, it's important to, to uh, talk about the real originator of radionics, and that was Dr. Albert Abrams. Uh, he was a San Francisco MD, and he had learned, I mean, he had become aware through these phenomena through percussion, and then developed um, the radionic discipline. Uh, he, he was a well-respected uh, MD until he started getting into um, electronic medicine. Uh, let's see, so I found a 1925 um, edition of a book um, citing uh, radionic case histories, and it looks like you're seeing TB was commonly mentioned, um, cancer was there, and 
I, I kind of went through because they were, it was a heterogeneous collection of case histories submitted by, wow. Um, um, okay. uh, so, um, uh, so this was a little bit of, uh, to show you how poor his reception was, uh, this was, was the comment by the, uh, uh, the head of the British Medical Society talking about the abuse Abrams, Abrams received by American medical authorities. Um, okay, so I want to move on to the idea of chirality and transmission. Here's another um, uh, view, much like Tom Dykstra's, that insects locate um, uh, by, by smell, and that's being radar. Um, and so, again, if you're smelling, if Noyori's right, then that would mean that um, for an insect to be able to discriminate between the two, it would have to be able to discriminate between two enantiomers. Uh, okay, I'm going to have to go really quickly here. Um, now, getting back to how this might relate to Bill's work, the, the, the Koch cures, the Abrams cures, and the Binkson's cures all follow a fairly similar um, re remission pattern. Um, these are Bill's comments from his 2001 talk, and um, so he talks here, as he did today, about bursts of healing, large ulcerations. Um, he I guess I didn't mention it, but he talks about skin being off, and let's see. Um, so these are some of Dr. Koch's compounds. I'm going to have to go through very quickly. Here, this, this I wanted to, to show because this um, was is an example of, oh no, this is Dr. Koch's slide, so here's a really extreme case of breast cancer. And normally I don't, or he wouldn't usually do um, mastectomies, but this one was obviously pretty bad, but so it's important to notice, like Bill talked earlier about skin in his earlier talk, um, you'll notice how bad the skin is in this patient, and notice how much better it is in the subsequent patient. Um, okay, so um, now, Bill, was, Bill had found in his book that radiation um, negatively influences, um, negatively, I mean, it impairs his ability to heal. Dr. Koch talked about that as well. And this is from his, Dr. Koch's 1929 book. I'm gonna go to the next page here. These are, a chap, these are chapters in the 1929 book. So, uh, there, that, so it's clear that there, he showed there was a recovery that had a common reaction, talked about the rate of reaction talked about the absorption of tissue and factors that prevent recovery, that would be, radiation would be one of those. Um, okay, here, here are Koch's molecules, or three of his compounds are most commonly used compounds. Um, okay, I'm gonna have to fast forward. Um, as you can see, the molecules are planar, and maybe, and so achiral here, achiral there, and now I wanna go back to that previous quote in blue. Now, Bill talked about the speed at which his mice remit. So I would argue that Bill's mice remit very quickly because they hadn't had a long, they, they hadn't been sick for long. It's a very artificial state to be injected. Few people get injections by giant needles. But, but when a disease, when a cancer condition did arrive very quickly out of the blue, shall we say, um, this is what Dr. Koch found. When the system is suddenly flooded with a toxin, especially with one uh, sensitive to the toxin, rapid growth and spread, this tissue is a sub such cases recover exceedingly rapidly. So that's already, that's what Dr. Koch wrote in 1929, probably out of print by the time Bill was born. Um, let's see. Uh, so uh, let's see here, it's gonna be olfaction. Uh, here is a Lakovsky case, I'm citing it, even though it's very different, but you're gonna see, um, you're gonna see a similar pattern. This is what I'm gonna call two photos. This is where, this was um, March 1934, this is where the case came when the, when the patient, when she arrived uh, about a month later. This is where, this is the regression you notice there, the dark spots. And then a month after this picture was taken, you notice a significant amount of improvement. And uh, there's a little black spot there, but you can see her eyes are beginning to re recur. And that was uh, lupus of the face, is what uh, Lakovsky described that as. Uh, let's see. Um, that one, that's not different. Uh, okay. Uh, here's some little similar work, um, related stuff perhaps. Um, what happens when, with tissue growth, so the idea I'm going for is, is there a chiral, a complex signal much like the pheasant feather when you, when the tissue has been there long enough and is transplanted, you have the form of the foot. If it's transplanted early, then you get a tail. 
So the idea would be from Becker that the signal that informs the tail, the structure of the tail growth is coming from here, whereas in this case, it's obviously coming from uh, the arm when it's done, when it's had time to um, have its signal from here. Uh, okay, I guess my time is up. Any questions? Yeah, could you talk a little bit about the mechanism they use to transfer in radionics, like to transfer the energy in, in, with information? Well, the Hale, you mean, so Hale talked about a, broadcast, a broadcasting device, and he, he described, he devoted two pages of his last book to this, and he said it uses about as much energy as a, um, like a 75 watt light bulb, and the idea is I'm not quite sure how it works, but that you put, you have a, both a target that you want it sent to, the signal sent to, and whatever it is you want sent to the target. So, um, does, 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 have I answered your question? Which, and so a picture, which book could be was a, that? a picture could be a target. His last book was called Chemivision, and he only devotes about two pages to it. Okay. 1951, any, any, I believe. Any other questions? Oh, one more. Thanks so much for your talk. I don't hear very many people talk about psychotronics. Do you want to mention the Psychotronics Association in their conference coming up later this year? Would, would I like to mention it? Oh, yeah. I assume um, you're, you're probably aware of it? or I, I have I've attended one once, yes. Yeah. There are a couple of people here that I think know about it. but And it was really cool seeing when I was there, I think it was 2002, there were old radionic machines being auctioned off, and it was really cool seeing the giant wooden boxes with a million knobs on them. Yeah. But I was new to that then, so I... Just as some people didn't know about this organization, I thought I'd mention that there is this organization called the U.S. Psychotronics Association, and they typically meet uh, in Kentucky these days. I brought some flyers for the meeting outside. Anybody else? Okay. Well, thank you all.